Hello, in this video we're going to determine limits given a piecewise defined function. In the video I'm going to go over two things. The first thing is how you would actually do this problem and uh, the other thing is what the most, I think the most common mistake is. Uh, I do find students, you know, do this mistake quite a bit and I'll, I'll go over that. Uh, I think the first thing to remember is every x value in the domain corresponds to only one of the function pieces. So if I said what is f of 3, you don't plug 3 into every single one of these. You find where 3 is, which is this piece, right? x is greater than 1, so that's where 3 is. 3 is greater than or equal to 1. So you would use the square root of x, so that would be the square root of 3. If I said what is f of negative 1, you would look to see where x equals negative 1 or where x negative 1 lands, which actually lands exactly here because x is negative 1, and so we would say 2. And finally, if I said let f of negative 3, then you'd go find where negative 3 is, and that's in this piece. And so you're going to be using the x plus 2 squared minus 1. So instead of the x, then that's going to be negative 3. So notice that I didn't plug in negative 3 into any of the other functions. It only goes into the one it corresponds to. And it comes from this right here. Now that we have that out of the way, let's go ahead and find some limits. The first limit I want to focus on is the limit as x approaches negative 1 Notice that I am giving a direction here. I have that minus sign. So that means I am coming in from the left. So the limit as x approaches negative 1 from the left of f of x. What you need to do, and it's, it's just the most, basically the crucial part of the problem, is what function, what piece am I using to evaluate the limit? Now since I'm approaching negative 1 from the left, you have to remember that th those are points like negative 1.1, negative 1.5. I mean, points slightly to the left of negative 1. So which one of these, or where does where those x values land, right? Negative 1.1, that's not bigger than 1, so that's it's not in here. It's not in here. All right, that equals negative 1. I'm not actually negative 1, but I'm slightly to the left. So the only place that I am is right here. Slightly left of negative 1 means you are less than negative 1. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite my function now with the appropriate function, the one that I'm supposed to be using. All right, that's actually the biggest mistake I find is people are not sure which function they're supposed to be using. So now that I figure out the right function, you can then go ahead and plug in negative 1. So we're going to get negative 1 negative 1 plus 2 squared minus 1. That's negative 1 plus 2. That's 1 squared minus 1. So that's 0. And that's actually the end of the problem. My limit is 0. So let's go ahead and try to do another one. Here, I want to find the limit as x approaches negative 1 of my function. Notice that I do not have a directional sign here. All right, so this means I'm coming from both the left and right. So you need to do actually two separate limits, one from the left and one from the right. So let's start with the left func or left limit. So we're going to have the limit as x approaches negative 1 from the left. But what's nice about this is I just did this problem, right? So what I need to do is figure out what function I'm supposed to be using. We already did it and found out that it was x plus 2 squared. And we already found out that the limit was 0. All right, now doing the right-hand limit. All right, you got to make sure that you use the appropriate notation. So I'm using that plus sign. Now you got to figure out what function you are supposed to be using. So negative 1 from the right. I'm slightly to the right of negative 1. So those would be points like negative 0.9, negative 0.8. So figure out where you are, and it's actually in here, right? Between negative 1 and 1, 
that's where I, I am. These are points in that region. So negative 1 to the right, I am going to be using negative 2x plus 3. Then we go ahead and just plug in negative 1. So we're going to get negative 2 times negative 1 plus 3. That's 2 plus 3, right, which is 5. So I have a limit of 5 on the right, and I have a limit of 0 on the left. Since these don't equal, then we can say that the general limit does not exist because the left and rights do not exist. Now it's actually important that not only do you, you know, get the right answer, does not exist, but to actually back it up with something. So you would say does not exist because, and then you would say the left-hand limit, which you would write like this, that's the left-hand limit, does not equal the right-hand limit. Let's go ahead and do another example. In this example, I want to find the limit of my function as x approaches 1. All right, since it's not a directional limit, right, I don't have a plus or minus sign here. Okay, I have to do both the left and right. So let's start with the left-hand limit. We have the limit as x approaches 1 from the left. All right, we need to figure out what function I'm using. Um, Sometimes I find this to be helpful for students, All right? If I uh, let's come up here, I draw like a number line, and then I mark all the important points, any of the breaking points, you know, where you jump from one function to another. So negative one, and then positive one, those are actually where I jump from function to function. And then in here, I would actually draw, or not draw, I would write in each function so what I'm supposed to be using in each region. So now, when I come down here and I'm saying uh, x is approaching 1 from the left, well, here's 1. This is to the left. So what function am I using? Negative 2x plus 3. And when you plug in 1, you get negative 2 times 1 plus 3. That's 1. All right, and then I got the limit from the right. I need to figure out what function I'm using. So I can go to that number line. All right, here's my one. All right, I'm coming in from the right, so I'm coming in from this direction. Which function am I using? Well, the function that's in that region, which is the square root of x. And now I can plug in one, so the square root of one, which is one. Now, since both the left and right hand limits match, it means the general limit matches, or the, sorry, the general limit equals what they are, which is one. Uh, you can write a little explanation and say the limit equals one because, and then this would these would be your reasons right here. Uh, so, I mean, you may not have to rewrite all the work. You've just shown it to me. Uh, but as long as you have this work shown, you'll be okay. Now, I did mention in a previous video that there are two ways of figuring out limits. One was graphically and the other one was analytically. This would be an example of finding limits analytically. Uh, but just say you were fortunate enough to be able to graph this and know what it looks like. Uh, here's the graph. You actually can see that it, it does match the, uh, here was negative one. We saw from the left, it was zero. We saw from the right, it was five. So the general limit didn't exist because they didn't match. And then when the limit approaches 1, coming in from the left, it equaled 1. Coming in from the right, it equaled 1. And so the general limit exists here, and it's 1. So you could have done this graphically if you, again, if you were lucky enough to be able to graph this piecewise function. Otherwise, you do it analytically like we did here.